Good morning, church. Thanks for joining us on this November 22nd. Um, this morning, we're going to do a special service. A number of different people are going to share, and I'm going to share too. And um, But it's a Thanksgiving-like service, for this is starting into Thanksgiving week. And it is so important that we give thanks and that we realize the gifts around us and the blessings of God. And and uh, maybe this year it's harder for you to give thanks. Maybe uh, you're disappointed that you can't be with family in the same way. Or maybe there are other things that you have been real trials for you, especially maybe lately. And, and this is a difficult season, we know, for so many. And, and um, yet maybe this is why we need this service even more. To remember and to count the blessings that God has uh, given to us in abundance and and to be thanks give thanks for the things that are around us that often we can overlook because the other things overshadow them so this is our thanksgiving service and i am glad uh, that you're with us uh, some announcements as we begin one is i'm going to put a, a picture here on the screen um all the mini christmas shoe boxes we received i think it's now over a hundred uh, that we have received here thank you for your generosity and giving to those um, we brought those in to where they needed to go on Friday. And uh, and so you can see a picture of all of them there. Um, so thank you for the giving of that. Our quilt auction um, is still going on. It will go on uh, another week. And so if you would like to uh, look at those, there's a link on your church email um, where you can take a look at all of the different quilts. There's like 20 of them there that the quilting ladies have made. And all the money they raise from anybody who purchases that, they uh, go towards many different charities and mission projects that they support. And it's a really good thing and beautiful quilts. Um, I wanted to mention that this week our Advent uh, bags will be coming to you. If you are in our church directory, we will be dropping one off to you. And inside you will find all of the supplies to help celebrate Advent, Christmas time, and our worship services um, from home. Uh, whether you come in uh, to our in-person services or whether you stay home and are watching them online, um, we want you to feel connected and a part of what's going on as well as celebrating the birth of our Savior. And believe that or not, it's uh, next Sunday that we start our Advent Christmas season. And behind me will be uh, some decorations that we will have up like we do each year. And we'll be bringing messages about the Christmas story and and remembering God's greatest gift to us. That all begins next Sunday. So this week, look for those Advent bags to be delivered to you. If you don't get one, please call me. We have extras, and we want to send one to you. And if you're not in our church directory, but you've been watching along and participating, and you'd like to have one too, we'd love to give you one. So it's no cost on nothing, and just, just give me a call, and, and you can either pick one up, or we can drop one off to you. With the heightened restrictions uh, that have come, as well as increased numbers uh, in Nebraska, boy, we are praying for that. We're praying for our health care workers um, in the hospitals. I'm hearing from some of our nurses in our, in our church that they've never seen this before. Every hospital room and wing is full. More people on ventilators there at Bryan than, than have, they've ever seen. Lots of sick people. And... Um, and with different things that are happening, even school activities um, and sports being shut down for a time here as we try to get a ahead of this uh, and limit the spread, we've made a few changes at our church as well. Um, we are going to temporarily suspend our Sunday school um, and our youth programs at this time. And there's going to be some creative ways. Our youth pastor and children's director and church will be reaching out. But our in-person Sunday school and youth events, uh, we're going to suspend until after Christmas. And then we're going to evaluate and see how things are in January. We are also going to temporarily suspend our 8.30 a.m. service. Um, that service we're going to put on hold for now. And we're just going to have the one Sunday service in person uh, every week. It'll be at 10.30. And um, we'll social distance. We'll be wearing our masks. We'll sing some of the songs of the season. We'll be reading the scriptures and lighting the candles and bringing the messages uh, from scripture. And, 
And if you uh, feel comfortable and would like to come out to those surfaces, services, we'll spread out in this large sanctuary we have. Um, but if you don't feel comfortable coming, we love you and we are glad that you're tuning in at home. And so we want you to know that. And, and this is a, a difficult season. And we have to make these, and these are painful decisions to try to know what to do. I get <laughs> sleepless, you know, wake up in the middle of the night wondering, Man, what am I supposed to do? Um, but together, the lead team, I think, has really uh, thought this out and said, this is good for now. And we'll see where we're at in January. And we still want to be together. So. so again, we'll have just the one Sunday services at 1030 um, in person. And then we'll, of course, still have our online for you. Uh, that's going to be some of our changes. Well, this week, again, it is our Thanksgiving service. Uh, a trio is going to be singing here. We're going to have a few different testimonies, some from uh, at home that we recorded uh, at different people's houses, and then also a couple uh, sharing here. And then I will close this with a small word about uh, being grateful and then communion, too. And so if you want to grab a little piece of bread and some juice from your refrigerator to give thanks at the end of this service. That is great. But I want to read this scripture and open us in prayer. This scripture from Philippians 4, 4 to 13. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all, for the Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Whatever is true, whatever is noble and right and pure, whatever is lovely and admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. And whatever you have learned or received from me, put it into practice. And the God of peace will be with you. For I rejoice greatly in the Lord. For at last you renewed your concern for me. You were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. But I am learning to be content in whatever the circumstance. I know what it is to be in need. And I know what it is to have plenty. And I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Dear God, in this Thanksgiving week, we pray that you would reveal your heart to us, that we might first see all the things that you give us, the million things that you do in our life each and every day, that we might give thanks to you for who you are and, and how you love us and, and all the blessings around us. And Lord God, that we might be a generous people, that we might give this thanksgiving, that we might look around to our neighbors and that we might think about those and, and lift up prayers for them and that we might help out where we can. Lord God, we, we want to give out of all that you have given to us. Be with our service now and this time, that together it might be pleasing to you. For you are what we are thankful for more than anything else. In Jesus' name we pray it. Amen.
One of the things I am most thankful for this year is God's reminder to be still and remember that he is God. Psalm 4610 is one of Lois Fraunhofti's very favorites and she reminds me of it often when I start getting a little crazy. And this year I've started to get a little crazy. Um, I'm very thankful that harvest went as well as it did and nobody was hurt. And one of the biggest things that rem I've been keeping in mind is God's plans aren't necessarily my plans and my plans aren't necessarily his plans. And so I've had an opportunity to stop and slow down this year because everything that I'm involved in has been canceled or on Zoom. Um, the neatest thing I think I got to do this year was that at home school and with Callie and Christian and having them here and being a part of their day to day life and seeing, learning them, learning them to see how different each individual they are. And I wouldn't have had that opportunity if God hadn't stilled my whole world. And I think that's what I'm most thankful for this year. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Uh, Dan has asked me to say a few uh, things that I'm thankful to God for, for this uh, 2020 year. Uh, when he first asked me, uh, my first thought was 2020, what's there to be thankful about? But uh, with, with all the challenges, there comes opportunities to see God's work. Uh, starting off, the uh, thing I'm thankful for is my uh, first grandson uh, was born uh, premature and then Within 2020, he has thrived and had had no setbacks and has has been been fine the whole time. So you thank you thank God in that because when you're born at three pounds ten ounces, you're not very big and and he's had no challenges. So that was that was good. And then uh, go on farther into the year, uh, me and 12 other friends were. Uh, caught out of the country in Roatan and when the world shut down over that weekend so uh, you go through lots of emotions up and down and and one of God's works there was that uh, of the 12 people there we never all freaked out at exactly the same time so you always had uh, you know always had some cooler heads prevailing and and you get through it and so I you know, at the end of that you look back and say yes God God had a hand in that, so thankful for that. Uh, thankful for God's rain through the summer. Uh, as a farmer, it was you know almost almost perfect. But then we get to August and uh, the rains quit. So then you you worry about it and you get into harvest and and yes, for me, soybean yields were disappointing, but but corn was very good. And then you go in a little farther into August and the prices were kept. Uh, kept escalating so that that again uh, thankful to God for that uh, as always I, I am thankful for all of my family all of my church family uh, wives sons daughters uh, grandsons uh, God's God's hand is there it's it's easy to see so uh, at the end of 2020 uh, I know that God is always faithful and I uh, I'm just just thankful for for God. Amen. Hello and a happy Thanksgiving. Um, this year, during a global pandemic, you realize how many big things there are to be grateful for. But I think this year the thing that really sticks out to me are the little things. Um, little things I'm so so grateful for. Um, the, the eye crinkles uh, when you can tell someone's smiling behind their mask the giggles of my students when they come in and they're so excited to see each other. Um, being able to go out for a walk, which we weren't able to do at all here for over a month. Um, and just the, the little things in life are the things that I'm so grateful for, along with um, continued connections with friends um, across the sea. We miss you all so much. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. This year, we are super thankful for our four awesome and healthy kids to keep us on our toes. Um, yeah, so there's one. 
and two, three, and the other one ran away after I told them to come over here. So, <laughs> happy Thanksgiving! This year, the Cole family really learned the value of slowing our lives down um, and just being with each other um, and, and really the value in that. And that's what I'm really thankful for this year. Okay, so I wanted to share a little bit of mine and Leo's story as we came to Waverly and what brought us here and that sort of thing. Some of you have probably heard it already, and if you have, feel free to go get a snack or something while I'm talking. But about three and a half years ago, Leo and I moved to the Waverly area. We moved into a big house with our daughter and our son-in-law and their kids, and we... um, lived here for just a little while when we started really feeling like we wanted to be more connected to the people of Waverly. And so we got online and we looked at churches. That was the first thing we did. And we went and visited a church and we didn't really connect there. So we checked again and we found this little country church. And I was totally excited at the thought of going to a country church. And so Um, we had been going to the same church in Lincoln for over 30 years, and we were continuing to go there. We had relationships there. We had commitments there. But I decided to try out a Bible study that I saw online, and it said it was at the Cove, whatever that was. And so I figured out where the Cove was, and I went there. And that was really out of character for me because it's hard for me to walk into a room of a bunch of people that I don't even know, but I had just determined in my heart I was going to walk in, I was going to do it, and I got there, and I checked the door, and the door was locked. What I found out later was the preschool, and then I saw the word cove over on the big building, so I thought, well, maybe that's the cove, and so I went over there, and I tried that door, and it was locked, and And I was walking back toward my car thinking, okay, maybe this wasn't a good idea. Maybe I'll just go home. When somebody came out of the preschool and said, are you looking for the Bible study? And I'm like, yeah, I am. And they pointed me in the direction. So I took a deep breath and I walked into a room of women that I was sure they all knew each other really well. And I didn't know any of them. And I was a little bit nervous, but I walked in and I introduced myself and it was Leah's Bible study. And The people, Leah and all the people there were so welcoming and so kind and so loving, and I was immediately sucked in right then. And then later I started going to the Bible study that Cassidy has here at the church, and same thing, Cassidy was so welcoming, and and the women, the relationships were so good, and Leo started going to the men's Bible study, and he felt the same way. And so we just... um, decided that we loved this, we loved the people here, and we were feeling, we were still going to church in Lincoln, and, but we were feeling drawn to Bethlehem Covenant, and so we started going to the 8.30 service at Bethlehem Covenant, caught the Sunday school, and then hustled over to Lincoln to go to praise and worship and teach the third, fourth, and fifth graders there who we had a really good relationship with, and it was just something we felt committed to doing at the time, but more and more we just started feeling like God wanted us to make a commitment here at Bethlehem Covenant, and so we decided once COVID hit that we were going to make the switch. We thought, well, this is a good time because it's out of the ordinary for everyone, and it won't seem so weird for us to step away from our other church and step into this church. Well, it did make it easier to step away from our old church, but it made it kind of hard at Bethlehem Covenant because it's really hard to get to know people when you're in the middle of a pandemic and social social isolation isolation is that the word so anyway everybody's isolated that's what I'm trying to say and we had a little trouble getting to know more people but we have the desire to get to know more people so all that to say this week we close on a on our new home and 
we are so excited about getting to know more people in this church and really investing in this church and really having people into our home and hearing stories hearing stories of the people's lives and what you've been through and what, you, what you're excited about and living the hard times with you and living the good times with you. We're excited about that. We believe in the church having relationship. And I know we're still in the middle of the pandemic, but I expect that it will be lifting more and more. And we just, our hope and our prayer is that after this pandemic lifts, after the restrictions are over, that the church doesn't forget to be the church. We need each other. God created us to need each other. He created us to live life together. He created us to lay our lives down for each other and to, to share each other's joys and share each other's burdens. And, and we want to be a part of that. And... I, I like it just as much as anybody grabbing a bowl of cereal and listening to a sermon in my living room where, while I'm wearing my pajamas, but that's not sustainable for the long term for the church because that's never how God intended us to be. He, can, he intended for us to be together, and we are so excited to get to know everybody and to really share our lives with more and more people in this church. And I want to share John 17, verses 20 through 23. It says, it was when Jesus was praying what was called his last prayer in my Bible, and he had prayed for the disciples, and now he's saying, I am praying not only for those disciples, but also for all who will ever believe in me through their message. I pray that they will all be one, just as you and I are one, as you are in me, Father, and I am in you, and may they be in us so that the world will believe you sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me so they may be one as we are one. I am in them and you are in me. May they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. So it's telling us that as we are in unity with God, as we are in unity with Jesus and as we are in unity with each other, that that's what really touches the world. That's what causes them to believe in him. And it's not easy. Church life is messy. We've been in church life long enough to know that church life is messy. It's not all us being all holy and perfect all the time. We all have our personalities. People hurt us. We hurt people. But it's about rising above that and valuing our relationships more than anything else. And when we do that, when we work through the muck and the guck and the personality differences and all of that stuff, and we rise up and we decide to value our relationships more than we value being right or more than we value how we feel, then the world is touched by that. And so, and that is not just a Sunday thing. That is an every day of the week thing. And, and our hearts are that we want more of that with you guys. And we are grateful, we are so grateful for the love we've been shown by the people that we have built relationships with here at Bethlehem Covenant. It's meant so much to us. And I guess I just want to say we look forward to really putting in the time to build the relationships with the rest of you. Hello. I was asked to share for the Thanksgiving service what I'm thankful for. James 1.17 says, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. When I look at my life so far, I see how God has constantly been working to bring me nearer to him and sonship. The Lord has been gracious to me through my life, so I found it necessary to tell of what I'm thankful from my past, my present, and the future to come. Past. I was blessed to be born in a home where Christ was a center and had a key influence. The Lord blessed me with a great family and church family as well. Both families have helped me grow in my relationship with God. And when I think of the time before I knew Christ, the thing that sticks out most to me is the patience of God. 
2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. The Lord was patient with me, even the year where I was ashamed of him and trying to run desperately away from him. God, in his love, led me to watch a video that caused me to deeply understand the importance of a daily relationship with God the Father. The Lord began to teach me about the gospel, and all of a sudden the gospel became more and more understandable. Grace became so much more amazing, and the mercy of God became more evident. Present. I'm thankful that I had grown our relationship with Christ before this year. I began the Bible in one year this year because of my dad recommending it to me, and it has held me accountable and has grown a habit of spending time in the Word of God. Through reading the Bible, God's character and his holiness have been revealed to me. I have been amazed how every time I read the Bible, something new is revealed to me through the Holy Spirit. Even if I had read the passage five, six times before, the Lord speaks something else into my knowledge. Reading the Bible has also made it a desire in my day, and if I don't read it, there's some kind of emptiness and hunger inside of me. God has helped me see the sins of my life and has helped me return to him every day. I used to try and fight temptations by my own strength and power, but all my efforts either led to guilt or pride. But the Lord showed his love for me and helped me understand it's him who fights the battles. He has been freeing me from past strongholds with his strength and prayer. I thank God for his daily love and his vast mercy and grace. He has given me a firm foundation and a peace beyond all understanding. Future. I thank the Lord for the future. Firstly, the future of my earthly life. Though tomorrow isn't guaranteed, I thank the Lord for every day I get to be a light in this world and to experience the great love of God. I'm thankful for the future of those around me, that God has a plan for every one of us and will be with every one of us through our lives. I thank the Lord that he will be with us and the church when we experience persecution in this life. The Lord has plans for every one of us to further his kingdom and bring those around us, friends and family, to Christ through our lives and testimony. I thank the Lord for all the good things he has granted me in this life, all the people, beautiful sights, and the gifts he has given me to use to further his kingdom. I thank the Lord for growth and discipleship, the never-ending ability to grow in the knowledge of him and the gospel. I thank the Lord for this life and the one after. I like to think of eternity as starting after you accept Jesus Christ as Lord. For death to a Christian is a mere blink of the eye, and we are in the presence of the Lord Almighty. I thank the Lord he sent his son Jesus Christ to die on the cross and bear my sins on the cross. I'm thankful that Jesus rose again, showing his great power and that we too will rise on his second coming. I thank the Lord that I will one day be able to worship him for all eternity and be in his presence. I thank the Lord for dying on the cross for me, giving me a new life and a reunited relationship with God. I just love all of those people, especially that last one, that young man. I tell you, he used to to fit in my arms, and even up until last year, we have pictures where he was uh, still smaller than I am, but now I got to look up to him every day, and I I think uh, that he even has a deeper voice than me. Um, I am thankful for him, I'm, I'm thankful for Ari, I'm thankful for Carrie, for, for all of you. Um, there's one more testimony. Uh, that was given to me to read from Darlene Marloff, who heard we were doing a Thanksgiving service. And and so she mailed me a letter. <laughs> and uh, she is staying home these days. Uh, she's been in our church uh, longer than anybody else. Uh, um, but she is a woman of faith. And and she sent me a letter. And, and she writes this on the top. She says, why I am thankful. And then she writes these words. She says, one year ago, I was summoned to Colorado because my daughter Lana's vital organs were all shutting down. As I walked out of the room after visiting her that night, I said, God, if you are still with us, please show me a sign. 
Just seconds later, as I entered the lobby of the hospital, I heard a grand piano playing that I have never heard played before. And the man was playing the song, Jesus Loves Me. I knew God had heard my prayer and was with us. That next morning around 5 a.m., all of a sudden I sat up in my bed from a deep sleep to a song that was in my head. Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves you and me. As well as the hymn, Standing on the Promises. They were both ringing in my ears. Today, my daughter Lana is in remission from stage four inoperable lung cancer. She enjoys near normal life again and is elated with a new granddaughter. She says, no one can ever tell me there is no God. God is for real. He is with us constantly. He loves us and is full of miracles. Prayers work, and I am so thankful for all the prayers that went up on her behalf. This is why this Thanksgiving, I have more to be thankful for than ever before. God bless us all, Darlene. You know, I was uh, thinking just a little bit this week, I had some extra time to ponder what it means to give thanks. For our verse from Philippians that we read um, says, Rejoice always, and, you know, come before our God in prayer with thanksgiving, it says. And to think about all that is good and right and pure and lovely and to, to keep our mind on those things. I saw the verse from Psalm 100, which says, We're to enter his gates with thanksgiving in our hearts and his courts with praise. And then 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18, even goes so far to say, Rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances, for that is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. It's his will that we be a thankful people. And it just kept coming up in scriptures to be thankful, to be grateful. I read all these verses calling us to be. And I learned something new this week, that the same word, the same root word for grateful is grace. It's grace. And grace is about receiving from someone what you haven't earned or even deserve, and yet they give it. Grace means gift. It's a gift. You know, when someone is kind to you and, and you haven't been very nice to them, but they're nice to you, that's grace <laughs> extended to you. When someone shows love to you or helps you and, and you haven't always been there for them or been lovable <laughs> or helpful, maybe more grumpy pants lately, but they overlook that and they reach out and love you and they help you, that's grace. <laughs> it's a gift. And so being grateful is really something of the heart. It's this understanding about life that it's all a gift. All that we have and, and have been given in this life is a gift. It's a grace. It's, it's a gift from God. Thankfulness comes from the humility to see each day as a gift of God. Each day, not guaranteed, not entitled to us or owed to us, but, but given to us by a God who came and said, I've come that you might have life and life to the full. That you might know me. That you might live in my love. It's just pure gift from the one who came for us. And salvation, not something we earned, but again, the gift of God, his grace. This is core Christianity, that we haven't done something to earn God's love. It's, it's not by our works that we are saved, but by grace, through faith in, in him. It's something that, that he freely gave. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. And while we were still sinners, <laughs> He died for us. Not after we changed our ways or proved ourselves or become, became lovable. No. While we were still sinners, stumbling around as we still even do today, 
he went to that cross. Why would he do that? Why would he love us? Who are we? It's, you see, it's all gift. He just loves you. It's his grace. And that's what I think touches our hearts so and causes us to love him and, and love others is because we know we're sinners and, and still struggle, but he is faithful even when we're faithless. We've been touched by grace, by the gift. And it is out of gratitude that we come before our God. It is out of gratitude that we approach every day and every opportunity. It is out of gratitude that we worship God and serve God and love God and obey God. It's not a grumbling obedience, but it's out of love in response to the million little things that he does in our life every day. Romans 12.1 says, in view of God's mercy... Offer yourselves as a living sacrifice. This is your worship. In view of his mercy. I began to realize looking up gratitude and thanksgiving scriptures that this is so important to who we are. And I was thinking this week, grace, you know, is like having a 70 degree day in November. You know, like we had this past week. You, you don't expect it. it. It catches you off guard, and yet it's so refreshing, you know. You expect cold and dark and chilly, and, and instead you get this sunny, beautiful day out of nowhere. <laughs> and it lifts your spirits, and you, you just want to be out in it. And, because you know it's a gift, and you know it'll get cold again <laughs> real soon. And, and so we come out of our homes, and we enjoy the gift of a 70-degree day in November. Carrie called me on Thursday afternoon and, and her boss had walked into her office uh, midday and, and said, go take a break. Just go take one. Go for a walk. Take a 15, 30-minute walk out around campus. Enjoy it. This is a beautiful day. Grace is like that. It's like a 70-degree day in November. I mean, a gift when life is hard and pressures build and, and we have our sorrows and our struggles and, and yet in the middle of them, God shows up and does something just like he did for Darlene. Just one of a million little things that he's always doing in our life, if we'll notice. He, he puts a man at a piano where she's going to hear it and gets him to play Jesus Loves Me. Why? Just because. <laughs> because that's his daughter. Who needs to know he's still there? He's always there. God does that. The gifts that he gives. So being thankful and living in gratitude is about seeing. Having the eyes to see that every day is a gift. Seeing that your salvation is. Is a gift. Seeing your friend that you have is a gift. Seeing your marriage, your kids is a gift. <laughs> this past week, I was sitting in our family room with Carrie watching TV, and and I think it was God doing a Darlene-like thing uh, for me. But I looked down and I noticed my wife's worn-out shoes sitting on the floor next to mine. And, and her on the couch all curled up. And, and I looked at those shoes. And I, I looked at her curled up there next to me. And, and I was so thankful for those shoes which were next to mine. And that I get to do life with this amazing person I don't deserve at all. It's like the evening walk I took about a week or so ago. I was all stressed out because it's 2020. And I took a walk about the time that the sun was setting. And, and all of a sudden, as I'm out there, you know, the sky went from blue to painted. Painted streaks of orange and red and pink. And, and suddenly, all these colors just appeared and filled the sky. And you couldn't help be blown away. And the cloud patterns and, 
you I mean you couldn't paint it if you wanted to or try to capture it on a camera it was but it was there and and I looked and and it just lasted only about 5 minutes and and then the sun went down and things started to turn to night but but for that moment all I could do was take it in in awe and wonder it's a gift Every day, this year has had its trials, but I'm seeing things that I don't normally see, and I'm appreciating things that I think I've overlooked before. Everything is a gift. It might be the guy at a piano. It might be a mind-blowing sky. It might be a pair of shoes sitting next to yours. It might be a moment your daughter takes to put a couple puzzle pieces in with you or a phone call that you get from a friend that you're glad is your friend or the, or the joy of serving or the job that you have or the act of goodness that you witness at Walmart or just your health in the moment that you enjoy. Some of us on this past Wednesday night, we're complaining again about 2020 and some new cancellations and disappointments that we were having. And, um, but as we were complaining, Bernil spoke up, and when he does, we all listen. And he just said, well, we're healthy. There are many nurses and doctors running tired because the hospitals are full like they've never been before. It's good that we're all well tonight and can be together. Everything is a gift. Give thanks in all circumstance. Enter his gates with thanksgiving in your heart. I'd ask you, are you thankful? Like Paul who said, I've known what it is to be hungry and well fed, living in plenty but also in want, and I've learned the secret of being content. For I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I saw this great quote the other day. It said, this is not a year to get everything you want. This is a year to appreciate everything you have. To be still and know he is God. And I'm learning that. This is a year of all years. <laughs> Who would have thought it? But it's a year to see his grace every day and let thanksgiving into our heart. To be a grateful people, to see each day as a gift in each moment, to, at home or together, even in trials, to know he is with us and that he loves us. And to be thankful for our church family and for our opportunities to live and love our neighbor and worship our God. You know, it has been proven through studies and research that grateful people are more generous people more helpful, kind, supportive, and giving. That gratitude leads to generosity. They've done studies on this. But scripture also says it. For those early Christians were known for being so kind and loving and so giving to, to strangers and orphans and widows and sick and the neighbors and people noticed in their communities and it wasn't simply because God commanded him to do these things, but it overflowed from their heart, from the grace that they had been received and, and given to them from their God. And now a grace that they wanted to share. As the verse says, we love because he first loved us. I think I've told you this story before, but I, I saw this so powerfully in El Chaco, Ecuador, this pastor invited us seminarians into his home, which was a very small place. He had gone through so much trial and loss and poverty, but he was so thankful. Thankful for the work that we had done there, thankful to God for everything that he had. And he wanted to give back and make a meal for us. And he invited us into his home and his wife prepared some potatoes and some and a chicken. And, and it wasn't a lot of food, but it was so much to them. 
And I think it was one of the biggest gifts I've received because of the heart of him. <laughs> For when we gathered around that little coffee table to eat, he prayed. And he gave thanks to God for about five minutes. <laughs> and he thanked God for each of us and for all of his blessings and what God was doing in his village. He went on and on. He had so much gratitude in his heart. He may not have been rich in the world's eyes, but he was rich everywhere that it counted. Thankfulness is seeing all as gift. And it leads to generosity. Give thanks to the Lord today. For he is good. And his love endures forever. If you have a moment, we're going to take communion together. And uh, maybe you've received, you know, and have some of these still from our church and its care bags. Um, if you don't, you can go to your your kitchen and get a little piece of bread, get a little piece of juice. It doesn't even have to be grape juice. <laughs> Just bring it from all that God has given you. For on the night before our Savior went to the cross, he was with his disciples at the table. And he took bread. And he gave thanks. And then he broke it. And he said, this is my body broken for you. Whenever you eat of it, remember me. Will you take and eat the body broken for you? And after supper, he took the cup and again he gave thanks. And he held it up. And he says, this now represents my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of every one of your sins. Whenever you drink of it, remember me. You drink of the cup. Happy Thanksgiving.